Good morning. It's very early in the UK. I hope that you're well, whatever time it is where you're watching and wherever you're watching. Welcome to DMAD's free series for beginners to intermediate QGIS users. Uh, this is lesson one. I'm Tim Aubrey, and today we're going to be looking at coordinate reference systems. Now, this isn't people's most exciting subject, and I'm going to try and break it down into a couple of lessons to keep things interesting. Uh, but it's really important concept, so please stick with it. Hey, welcome back to what is probably lecture nine now, lesson nine. Um, and today we're going to be talking about coordinate reference systems. Uh, this is going to be a two-part lecture. It's a lot of information to take on. Um, I'd recommend getting pen and paper because there's going to be a couple of definitions which we're going to talk through, which will be really uh, useful to you to have a real grip on. Um, I'll be honest, for a lot of people this isn't their most exciting lecture, um, but it's really important one to understand. I still have people who are doing their PhD um, asking me questions uh, about coordinate reference systems. I mean they're brilliant scientists but they've just never been taught it properly so I thought we'd try and teach at least the basis of it properly so that you can really start to get down to grips with it. As I said this is just going to be a short introduction to coordinate reference systems um, and there's going to be at least a second part if not a third part and we'll try and break that up with some uh, break it up with some practical lessons just so you don't lose interest. Um, I've tried to keep it as jazzy as possible with the slides. Um, so yeah, we'll dive in. So the objectives of today's lesson, uh, the first is to learn about projections uh, and what a coordinate reference system is. The second is to learn about the different types of coordinate reference systems. And finally, we're going to look at common problems and things to be aware of when working with different coordinate reference systems and yeah let's dive straight in okay so firstly what are map projections so very basically map projections try and portray the surface of the earth or at least a section of the surface of the earth on a flat surface or piece of paper so in other words they try and convert our our real 3D spherical word, world. Um, it's not actually spherical, it's ellipsoidal, but we try and convert from this, this 3D shape to a planar or flat shape. So what are coordinate reference systems? Well, coordinate reference systems basically define how places on our planar surface or our 2D piece of paper relate to real places on Earth. So you may be thinking, how do I decide which CRS to use? So which coordinate reference system to use? And basically the answer is that it depends. Um, and it will depend on the data available to you, the extent of your survey area. So are you looking at a very local area or are you looking at something that spans countries or even continents? And the analysis and what you want to do with your data. So let's just have a look at map projections in slightly more detail so in the past we've always really used the globe to represent the earth uh, the globe's a really good start because it maintains uh, the majority of the earth's shape uh, I mean they're normally spherical whereas I said the the earth's actually an ellipsoid so actually the the center where the equator is is wider than um, if you were to do a rotation north-south so actually the center of the globe is pulled out so if you imagine we've got a sphere and we've just stretched the center a bit wider um, also obviously we're not showing the mountains we're not showing the depressions so it really is quite a basic representation but it's still not a bad representation uh, and also it maintains the spatial configuration so that's how the different continents and large countries are related to each other at sort of a continental level 
and that is that South America is displayed in reality how it is next to North America and Africa next to Asia, Asia next to Europe, etc, etc. The downsides of this are they're not exactly convenient to carry around in your pocket and they're only useful at small scales so we're talking about 1 to 100 million the scale that we'll be using. Uh, to put that into perspective, to have a map that covers all of where we work in Bar in Montenegro uh, on like a standard computer screen, we're looking at around one to thirty-two thousand. So down from one to one hundred million, down to one to thirty-two thousand. And generally, when we're working on marine conservation, we're going to be working at scales which are one to two hundred fifty-five. Uh, sorry, one to two hundred fifty thousand or bigger. Um, quite confusingly when we talk about bigger scale we're talking about more zoomed in which might seem the wrong way around to some people but that's just how it is so if we're working at a large scale then we're, we're really zooming in on something okay so if we were to make a globe of this size um, first of all it'd be really impractical uh, be virtually impossible financially and how would we use it it, it would be impractical to use as well as to build. So cartographers, that is map makers, began to design what we call projections, which showed 2D images of the earth, but at reasonable accuracies, trying to have as few distortions in terms of our angles, our area, or, or our shape um, as, as much as possible. Uh, and each of these projections really has its advantages or disadvantages. So a, pro a projection system might be perfect for mapping your town or for mapping a country, so mapping Montenegro or the UK, the States. Um, but this might result in unacceptable distortions when it comes to mapping your continent. So for example, a map that we might use to map very accurately Montenegro with limited distortions of Montenegro would have huge distortions by the time it got out to Western Europe. So around Spain, Portugal, the UK, um, there'd be huge distortions. So the projection you choose is really important and it'd be really dependent on, as I said, a lot of different things, but mainly the area that you're looking at. So we have three main families of map projections. Uh, and some people say that the best way to look at these projections is by trying to imagine the earth as a, a wireframe with a light bulb inside and then placing um, an opaque object around the outside. I actually find this analogy a bit confusing. Um, I think it overcomplicates things but it's, it's up to you really. But basically however we do it we have the three different families. Uh, the first is cylindrical, the second is conical, that's cone shaped, and the third's planar, so that's flat. Whenever I say planar, it, mean, it refers to a flat surface. Um, and very basically, we, we put our, our cylinder for cylindrical families, we put our cylinder over the earth, and then we choose our area and we just unroll that cylinder. Same with the cone. We put our cone around the earth and we just, once we've got our area, we just cut as the scissors imply and we just unroll that to make a flat surface. Um, straight away, you can probably see that we're gonna get some sort of distortion in either the X or Y axis, depending on which way our cylinder is facing. And you can see again with the cone, we're gonna get distortion straight away. Um, so, as I said in the previous slide, each one has their advantage and disadvantage, and it will really depend on your area. So, that's just been a really quick introduction. Uh, hopefully, you've learnt a little about projections and what a coordinate reference system is. Uh, you'll remember we talked that, about relating points on a map to real points on Earth. Um, we've learnt about the different types of coordinate systems, coordinate reference systems, sorry. And we have um, learnt about a couple of the common problems and things to be aware of.
like I said, this is just the first part. Um, thanks for bearing with. I knew it was probably quite tough going. Um, that's the reason I've broken it down into three and we'll squeeze some practical lessons in between as well just to keep people interested really. Um, but yeah, thanks for bearing with and hopefully you've got something out of that. Talk soon. Bye.